Hi, I'm going to share a bit of information about what mastery based learning looks like in my high school algebra one class in Washington DC. So um, in order to be able to attempt a mastery check, students must first have completed an instructional video and earned a four out of five on the embedded questions. And then they need to have completed a practice assignment and they need to have earned at least an eight out of 10 on the practice. To the extent possible, I try to use a standard 80% bar for mastery for everything that we do in our class. So for example, on unit assessment, students are required to revise if they don't earn an 80%, which is aligned with our bar for mastery for mastery checks um, and the daily lessons. So if unsuccessful after watching the video or doing the practice, they will redo the videos and practice assignments until they achieve success. They are encouraged to work with peers on these items to ask for help if they are stuck and to um, talk to the students who are lesson superstars and are on or ahead of pace. Um, we regulate this progression in the settings in Canvas, both module prerequisites and module requirements. So in order to demonstrate mastery, mastery on a lesson itself, students must earn at least 16 out of 20 on a mastery check. They get two attempts to do that. Um, I do encourage them if they do one attempt to analyze their errors before they would try their second attempt so that they're not just clicking through their second attempt and making the same mistakes twice. If after two attempts they still have not achieved a 16 out of 20, then I do a one-on-one -on -one teacher check-in. Um, so in terms of grading, the majority of students' grades end up being based on their mastery of key standards, both through mastery checks, um, unit assessments, um, quarterly assessments, and semester assessments or projects. Um, always a higher grade on any assignment, including mastery assessments, overrides the previous grades. Um, and as a team at my school, we have normed on the following um, points breakdowns. Videos are always five points. Notes are five points. So if there are four lessons in a unit, students would have a 20-point note packet. Practice or homework assignments are 10 points each. Mastery checks are 20. Projects and unit assessments can range between 50 to 100, depending on their level of intensity and rigor. And our interim or semester assessments are always 100 points. So um, practice is a component of every single lesson. It's generally delivered through Canvas. Sometimes I use outside platforms, but I found it easiest to just use Canvas. Um, if I use an outside platform like, um, say, Khan Academy, I would still set a bar for mastery. So if there are four questions on a Khan Academy assignment, I'd say you need to get three out of four correct. Um, so try to align that with our bar for mastery in the class. Um, and But if it's on Canvas, they need to get 8 out of 10 on the practice in order to move to the mastery check. And in their notes packets, at the end of each lesson, students complete a summary where they reflect on what they learned, what the overall lesson was about, the goal of the lesson, something um, that was interesting to them, or something that they had a question about and didn't understand. Um, we try to build our mastery checks into Canvas directly using question banks. We found this to be a very efficient way to create many different versions of mastery checks, especially because we um, use the modern classrooms approach across all of our algebra classes. We don't want students from one class like sharing the answers of a mastery check with students of another class. Um, so it's really helpful to create um, big question banks, and then to just randomly select questions from the bank. Depending on the um, the how intense or involved the questions are, we generally do either two questions worth 10 points each or four questions worth five points each. Um, we do use a site called Problem Attic a lot. You can pay for um, a subscription or some schools will pay for it that allows you to download QTI files um, and upload them directly to Canvas, and that automatically creates a question bank. So that has saved us a lot of time this year in terms of building um, quite a number of problems into Canvas question banks quickly. 
Um, and each mastery check is, of course, aligned with the learning objective. So this particular mastery check was aligned with the objective of factoring a polynomial expression that is a difference of two perfect squares. Um, one more thing to say about the mastery checks, I try to avoid a lot of just A, B, C, D multiple choice questions that students would be um, able to guess on. So we try to use different question types like fill in multiple blanks, select all that apply, multiple drop downs, um, et cetera, just varying the question type so that um, students can't just click, click, click and happen to get uh, 16 out of 20. Um, in terms of revision and reassessment, um, like I said, students do get the two attempts and then they have to um, do some kind of check-in. Some of the students, or sorry, some of the teachers that I coach at my school actually use this form um, where students reflect on um, their error. So they'll show their original work. They will try to identify their error. They will actually um, talk about which misconceptions were cleared up. They will request additional supports if needed. Um, personally, I prefer to just do one-on-one -on -one conferences. I think it's kind of a personal preference, but we do really emphasize students reflecting on their errors or misconceptions and identifying what those are before granting another attempt. Um, in terms of our missing and late work, we do use soft zero grading. So we put a zero as a placeholder in the gradebook right away if something is behind pace. So if something's due on Wednesday at 11.59 p.m., when I come into work the next Thursday morning, I will, um, the following morning, Thursday, I will just quickly put the zeros in the gradebook. Um, in Canvas, it's really easy. You can set a default grade. So all students who haven't submitted, you can just set that by default to a zero. Um, we do clearly communicate an end of unit cutoff date, um, so we don't accept late work after that cutoff date um, unless there's like an extenuating circumstance, like a student was out with an illness for an extended period of time. Um, students with IEPs do get extended time, so we get grant one week after the unit cutoff date. Um, and I do quite a few different forms of reflection in my class. Um, I think I've mentioned some of my daily reflection practices, but we also do um, interim end reset and reflection surveys. And at the end of every unit, I have students also fill out a reflection survey. Um, it's for them to reflect on their own progress, set goals for the following unit, and provide me with feedback. So here's an example of what that looked like for one unit in my class. They'll rate their mastery on each of the topics. They'll um, give feedback about how useful our different learning tools were. They'll provide me feedback, um, share any questions or comments, talk about how much they enjoyed the unit, um, and reflect on their strengths, um, accomplishments, ch and challenges from the unit, and then set a goal. So that's all I have for mastery-based learning.